Hello fellow tankers, this is Dauntless, and today I'm going to be playing a game in my newly acquired Lorraine 40 ton, the tier 8 uh, premium medium French tank. This vehicle, if you saw my other replay, you'll know that I've really <laughs> grown accustomed to. I just picked up my first mark of excellence in under 50 games, which I'm quite happy with. I don't think I'm going to be able to 3 mark this one just because there are a lot of skilled players that play it, and I'm really not the best in auto loaders quite yet. Um, anyway, <laughs> we'll just get started with the game here. My team is very, very unfortunate. All red players except for the Hellcat, which isn't going to be able to do much. Their vehicle, I mean, their team is so-so. They have a good light tank, which is kind of scary um, for this map just because, you know, he'll probably be spotting here. And depending on how stupid my team is, he's going to be able to pick up some good spots. Uh, that coupled with the Scorpion G that they have, our team could get absolutely wrecked if we're not careful. Um, and they have another Lorraine player who is a very competent player as well. And because of that, it's going to be kind of sketchy. And Paris, in my opinion, is not a great map because for me, what do I do? You know, I can't really push down into the south because I have no armor. But if I go north, I'm absolutely at the mercy of our light tanks, which, uh, you know, if you look at our T-37, it's probably not the greatest thing to do and so I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place where it's like what do I do and I'm showing you guys this replay because I want to show you that there are alternative ways to play um, Paris again not you know probably nothing uh, too new or exciting for you guys I'm sure you've seen these tactics played before by other players but I just want to show you what this vehicle can do in a tier 8 game like this because the last replay I did show was a tier 10 and you can't be quite as aggressive in the Lorraine when you're in a tier 10 game. Anyway, we'll get the game started. So something that you can do, depending on the vehicle that you're in, um, is get shots off down through this corridor here. If you sit right in this area here, depending on your view range, the view range on this vehicle isn't the greatest, and I do have optics and some crew skills going, but it's not to the point where I can actually spot super well down that line, and Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to really light a lot here. But I'm going to set up anyway, just because, again, there is always that chance that I will see something, and having an auto loader like this will ensure that I will be able to get a few shots in if they stop, or if I track them, or if there are multiple vehicles pushing across. And I'm going to take that opportunity. The north is, you know, I guess it's decent. You know, our guys were smart enough and they went south with their heavies and not through the field. Um, and. Oh, here we go. Black Prince, thank you very much. Didn't get spotted for that either because the Black Prince has very, very low view range. And I'm going to sit here for just a little bit longer. I took a blind shot because I saw some stuff moving and I thought possibly I could get a blind shot in. I actually don't know if I connected with anything there. Probably not, judging by the fact that it looked like my bullet went into the ground. But I'm going to turn around. Now, I'm not going to force a clip here just because... I realize that there are shots to be had, and I don't want to wait around 30 seconds for my clip to reload so I can get a shot off. So this T44-100 is sitting here sniping. Um, I'm going to peek out. i got to be careful that he doesn't peek out at the same time so I don't shoot him, but he sits back. And I know I get lit here, but my reload is fast enough to where I'm able to get those two shots in very quickly, and now I'm reloading. If I didn't have those two shots, I would have had, what, another two shots left in my auto loader because I would only risked two shots and fall back. So thinking ahead of what you're going to do like that, I knew I was going to go snipe. I knew I was going to risk two shots and that's where not forcing a reload is a good idea. Now so far they've lost their light tank which is good. Uh, it's you know four to two right now in favor of us. We're winning and the Skoda gets lit again. Tier six isn't really a threat but I'm not going to pass up on a free kill and some free damage. So at this point, they have an E25 and a Scorpion G that's watching over there. Everything else has been lit except for the Achilles. I'm assuming he's sitting back there somewhere, probably in B1, C1 area. Achilles has a very low alpha damage gun, even though it does have very good DPM. But I'm not really concerned with him. The E25 could chew me up if I let myself get in the open. But I do have team members that are sitting behind me. And I do have a full clip, meaning that actually I have only three shots. But... If he somehow gets lit and starts shooting at me, I can return fire just as quickly as he can, and I'll probably end up killing him. So I push forward because I realize that our south is not doing very well, and I need to take advantage of the fact that they're distracted right now by our allies and get some shots in. I peek around. 
I noticed that the IS-2 is lit. The T-34-3 was also lit, but I went for the IS-2 for some reason, and I'm not actually sure why. I could have shot either. I think my reasoning behind it was I didn't want to attract the attention of the T-34, uh, T-34-3 because if I shot him the first time he would have definitely looked at me because he was already pointing in my direction and he I did not want to get hit by one of his juicy rounds whereas IS-2 was way off in the distance his derpy gun has really no chance of killing me or even hitting me at that range and so I took the opportunity to hit him instead. Now my clip is almost done reloading and the Achilles is shooting me and I start backing off but I'm like, you know what, screw it, Achilles, shoot me all you want to. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that this IS-2 is broadside to me and put some shots into him. And the Achilles, for some reason, stopped shooting me. So I put three in, turn around, and I forced a reload. Now, this was kind of a mistake, in my opinion, because I knew our guys was, were pushing the field. The Achilles had a shot on me, meaning I most likely have a shot on him. And if I had waited, I would have been able to put a shot into him when he got lit. But... You know, I'm thinking right now the T-34-3 is probably going to come after me, and I don't want to be caught with my pants down. I want to have a full clip by the time he comes to engage me because our south is completely gone. And these are the things that you have to be thinking ahead of when you play an autoloader. So I'm thinking, okay, I want to get a shot on him. I want to get a shot on him. He disappears. And I'm just kind of waiting because I don't know what the enemy team is going to be doing. I have a feeling that the, the Dash-3 is going to be pushing up and I see an OI. Quick shot into him, and thankfully he didn't stop, because if I had put another shot into him, I could not have killed this guy. And this is where I auto-load, because sometimes auto-loading, or I'm not, not auto-loading, auto-aim. <laughs> I auto-aim because I don't want to be distracted and miss my shots there. He's moving around, I could accidentally hit him in the track, a lot of things could happen um, if I'm nervous any of those things and so by auto aiming at this close range I have enough pen where I guaranteed to pen him it's gonna put the crosshairs at right in the middle of the hall and I'm not gonna derp a shot and again I want to keep my eyes open for anything else you know if the black prince or something suddenly shows up behind me auto aim in those situations in my opinion is better because auto aim is guaranteed to hit pretty much at that range and it's not gonna have any human error involved so now it's two versus four and I don't know how much life that super Pershing is on. And there he is. Oh, yay, he's on full health. <laughs> so I am lit, but I want to try to get some shots into him. Super Pershing is really trolley armor, and he, and I'm going to pop out. Unfortunately, I take a shot. I tried to go for his uh, side armor. Unfortunately, I'm unable to do so. And this gun is trolling me. I knew he was about to shoot me, so I fired right when I pulled back. Unfortunately, I was able to lob that shot uh, right to the side of the building and I decide to force another reload. Now I know that he's going to be sitting in the middle. He can't really escape because of our guys and I want to get down into the J5 area right down here onto the bridge and if he's sitting in the middle I'm going to be able to kill him with a clip. I ask my team don't rush in, stick together, but like I said before about my team they're kind of unfortunate, they're getting greedy, Super Pershing is on full or close to full life and actually I guess he's half life now but he's gonna definitely take advantage of the fact that our guys are isolated now when the super is engaging this Patriot or this pilot our comet should have you know I would have hoped he would have pushed in but he didn't and the super pushing I'm really hoping that he pushes out into the open but he gets unlit I think about taking a shot here but if for some reason the Black Prince is sitting down in this area and he's behind a bush or something and he's unlit I really don't want to take that risk getting lit for a blind shot so I'm gonna wait because I feel like he could push out and chase the comet because the comet was last lit for him right around here and the super just because he isn't the greatest player I feel like he might push through and if he does push across here and comes out from behind these bushes I'll be able to get a side shot on him and hopefully get a couple in my team is telling me here that the the Black Prince is a one shot, which is good for me. If he was full life, it could have been difficult because that thing does have a uh, decent rate of fire on its little gun. And this thing kind of gets ammo racked easily and takes a lot of module damage and dead crew members. And so, you know, while I'm clipping him, if he puts three into me, 
then I could potentially lose my ammo rack and then lose the game. So I'm going to push. I can't really sit still too long because the comet is exposed. Time is of the essence here, and I want to conserve my HP, but at the same time, I don't want them to get into a situation where like one's capping and then one comes behind me. I want to try to play aggressive as possible because, again, the Lorraine only has four shots. If for some reason I can't kill both vehicles with four shots, then I'm pretty much screwed if they are together. So right now, while they're still, you know, the odds of them being separate right now are quite high because the Black Prince is a slow tank and same with the Super Pershing. And in my opinion, they're probably going to be separated. So the Black Prince is out in the open and he's going after a Comet. I'm trying to get behind him so I can get a shot in and save our Comet. Unfortunately, I'm not able to do so. But I am able to come around this corner and finish off this Black Prince. Now I want to kill him in one shot so I have three left for the Super. Um, unfortunately, that shot just kind of went high. I think he thought that I didn't have an autoloader or something and so um, I'm able to kill him quite nicely. Now you see me switch over to APCR here. I realize that it's safe to reload a clip. The super has, I think, like 500 HP left, so I should almost guarantee to kill him in two shots, but I want to have four shots to where, you know, I even if I do bounce a couple, I'm able to kill him without dying myself. And this is where HP uh, conservation is very important. I have 700 left, meaning I can take three or four shots from the super without dying, or the fourth shot would definitely kill me. But having this much HP towards the end of the game with 4,000 damage is quite nice because that means I'm able to take a couple shots, make a few mistakes, and still come up on top. I have no idea where the Super Pershing is. I'm assuming, based off his stats and the fact that I didn't light him when the Black Prince was here or the fact that he didn't come out to engage me, I think that he probably went back. And he's probably sitting in this bush here, and this is a great bush for defense because he can watch your cap. And he can also watch the field, meaning that he's going to be safe from pretty much every avenue of um, advancement. I realize that he might be sitting there, and so I swing around wide in order to try to spot him. And it's going to be difficult to do so because if he is hiding in that bush, you know, my view range isn't amazing and my camo isn't that great, so there's a good chance I could be spotted first. I push around and I get myself, I tried to get myself into this bush, but unfortunately I was lit. Um, he, ha I had his side for a second, but I didn't want to risk that shot because, again, if I missed for some reason, um, I would only have three shots left, and I don't want to have to put in another whole clip. So notice how he's lit and I'm lit. I'm pushing straight across here, and he's probably going to think that I'm going to be pushing around. I'm bluffing here. Um, I want to make it look like I'm going around and coming through the field or something like that, but no, I'm just going to come straight back the way I came because... I feel like he could be turned around. So I'm coming in at full speed hoping to catch him with his backside turned to me and I'm able to finish him off really quick. I come around the corner and nothing. That kind of caught me off guard. I was not expecting that. I don't know where he is. I'm looking around and then he gets lit. He somehow managed to get over there very quickly and at this point it's just a matter of cat and mouse. I'm going to pounce on him because I want to end it now. There's no need to take in sniping shots and being safe. I know he can't kill me in one shot, so I come around, take the uh, hit, and I'm able to put two into him and finish him off. Anyway guys, hopefully you found this replay entertaining. Um, you can see the full potential of this tank in this replay. Just the ability to clip things, the ability to relocate. You know, I circled the entire map looking for that super in a matter of seconds. And that's something that's very, very helpful to, you know, carry games like this. Now, obviously, it doesn't always work. And in a tier 10 game, it would be completely different. But to be able to assassinate vehicles with that amount of, you know, speed is quite nice. And if I was in a situation against, let's just say he was an E100, I could have still tanked and a hit from an E100, and even if he had a thousand HP left, I could have still clipped him in one. And so, this is where saving your HP towards the end game with an autoloader is quite vital. But again, that's the catch 22 where a lot of players want that are new to the game want to, you know, unload their whole clip and they end up getting killed before they can do so. <laughs> Anyway, guys, um, hopefully, again, you found that entertaining. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a like down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for more content like this in the future. As always, guys, thanks for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll talk to you guys later.